today's scripture is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all these obedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Look at ideas, thoughts. The Bible says we can hold these things captive. We can hold our thoughts captive. A lot of things are very possible in the Bible. But if you don't know, you think that oh, everything is impossible. You know, the Bible teaches us how to do it. You see, ideas will come to you. You don't know how to remove it. But the Bible knows how to remove it. He said you can hold ideas captive. You can hold an evil that is in your mind captive. You, you, you know how police arrest people? <laughs> Do you know how police arrest people? Police will arrest them and put handcuffs. You know, make them powerless. They can't box the police anymore. That's how you treat evil ideas that enter you, your mind. Evil ideas. If you don't know how to treat evil ideas, they will grow. Ideas grow. Yeah. Thoughts grow. That's why many people are bipolar. They are depressed. They are, they are mad. They are insane. Some of them are, you know, crazy. Some of them are, are like zombies. Some of them, because this is our ideas, you know, imaginations, you know, thoughts that enter their mind. And they continue to, to feed on it. They continue to meditate. They continue to think of, of it. Until this idea sees all their faculties. Have you been angry before that you think about that thing almost all the time? All the time. When you wake up, you start thinking about it. When you sleep, you start thinking about it. Nothing will make you to remove your heart from it. That is dangerous, church. So if you know how to do these things, you take those thoughts captive, you cut them out. You remove them from your mind, you are free again. So we are going to learn things today and pray. Um, good learning, go with prayer. Prayer is very important. So uh, look at it here where we read. Is there, right? So Tres says, For though we walk what? In the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Though we live in the flesh, we live in the world, but we do not do business, we do not fight according to the principles of the flesh. We don't do that. He said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they are not of this world. That's what carnal means. They are not material, they are not uh, flesh, they are not of this world. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hosts. What is that? That is the major thing. It's called stronghold. What is stronghold? Stronghold here in this connotation is like negative stronghold. That means an idea or thought that enter your mind that has built up so big, like a wall, that every time you are thinking about it, that's what stronghold is. Stronghold is very, very big thing that you started thinking when it is small, but it is now big in your mind. It doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to move. That's stronghold. See, so many people have strongholds. You see, and when you know that they have it for a long time, you know, when you touch them, they go there. You know that? If you touch them, they go there immediately. If you touch somebody, you say, oh, uh, my sister did this to me. And, and you know, you know, he start telling you that. When you touch them, they go to that place because it's hurting them. 
for a long time. It's stronghold, stronghold. You see, um, there is positive stronghold. Um, the Bible taught us to make memorial, to make memorial of the communion. For example, Jesus taught us. He said, as often as you take this, you remember my death. That is positive stronghold. You can, if you can uh, occupy your mind that Jesus died for you, is a very good thing. Uh, that it, you know the idea of stronghold. Look at how it is. The idea of stronghold comes from the idea of memorial stone. Memorial stone. When somebody died and buried, you know, they put the stone there and say he died on on so 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 date and uh, he was a good man. You know that. So when you go there year after year, that thing is there. There you are reading it. That's stronghold. Is in the mind. Is just written in, in 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 rock, in stone. There in your mind. It doesn't go. That's that's stronghold. You see that the devil can put stronghold, but positive stronghold is good because Jesus gave the impression that he said, as often as you take the communion, remember something. Remember I died. Remember my death. So we can say that the death of Jesus is one of the good strongholds we can have in our mind. Because Jesus said we should do that. Amen? So you can have that stronghold in your mind. Jesus died for me. That's a very positive stronghold. This is good. And whenever anything touches you, like the devil wants to intimidate you or fear, want to come to you, you go there immediately. Jesus died for me. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. So that's good. You really see that? So Jesus said, as often, as often. Jesus didn't say, do it only once. Say, as often as you take communion, remember, remember, have a stronghold that I died for you. So that is very good. That was every child of God should have that one. Jesus died for me. In, in your heart, in your mind. Now, listen. The, there's something they call the temple. The temple. T-E-M-P-L-E -E, Temple That word temple Look at where it is, it's here It's here, here I mean, it's a temple This is a temple But now it's, it's, it's the house of the Lord, right? So the temple Is a part of your mind A part of your brain, part of your mind That's the temple But if you check it In your dictionary Temple, it will also add that one You say it's going to be part of your mind between your eyes and probably your ears. Your eyes and your ears. Yeah, that's your temple. Why is it called temple? Temple is a place where you have the picture, image, picture, picture. God talks to us in picture. When you have dreams, you see pictures. You see, God doesn't talk grammar all the time. He shows you, you know, He shows you things in picture. So it's in the temple. That's why in the temple of God in Jerusalem, the money changers come to the temple to change. If you have a note for your offering or for your tithe in Jerusalem, and it has the picture, the picture of your head of state or or the, the Caesar, or the governor, or the queen. It has a picture there. They say, don't bring this way into the temple because no image, no image. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Don't bring image. They will tell you. So that's why money changers come there. They will change that one, that money you are coming, that has image. They will change it for you to give you coins or other money that doesn't have image. That's what they do in Jerusalem. That's why Jesus was angry. He came there and he flogged them out, right? He said, you are making business. <laughs> now, when they change that money, they, 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 they make profit. They make profit. Just like uh, the money changers here also, they make profit. You know, if the money is changing, they have certain percentage, they will deduct from your money. So they are making profit. But people are happy that they are not bringing people's image 
That's why on that day when somebody said say to Jesus, is it right for us to pay tithe or to pay tax to Caesar? Jesus said, who has money there? Do you have any money there? Somebody said, look at coins. Jesus said, whose image is, is on this money? Whose image? They said, Caesar! Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. You are made in the image of God. Give yourself to God. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, you see how, how Jesus teach things. Now, some people are in the temple area. They are in the temple area exchanging that money because God is a spirit. So you don't bring image. So they will they will change. Now, did that temple area in your human figure, in your human figure, that temple area at the entrance is here. Between your between your two ears, that's where they enter. They enter into your mind. That's the mind of God. The mind of Christ. When something enters there, it controls the rest of you. When something enters that place into your temple, your mind, when you allow something to enter your mind, your temple, it will control the rest of you. When you enter, when you allow an idea, a thought, somebody is calling you early in the morning, you are preparing to go to church. He's calling you early in the morning and said, you know what, you know, uh, how about us going out to enjoy ourselves today, this morning? You say, no, I'm going to church. He said, no, I know. Every time church, every time church, he is planting an idea in your mind. <laughs> and you're going to start thinking about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's right. Today I'm tired. Uh, today, why not you say, uh, he, he, he's tempting you, he's tempting you, he's tempting you, you see, you see, so immediately Jesus would not accept that temptation, he would say, go behind me, go behind me, I'm going to take, go to God, but some of us, we, we entertain temptation, we, we entertain it, we say, oh, oh, maybe, 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 maybe he's right, maybe, maybe today I'm, I'm tired, maybe, you know, Small, 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 small. If you entertain it in your temple, it will control you. Jesus said, when you are getting old, somebody will lead you where you don't want to go. You're, you're getting old. That, you, see, you see, ideas that are evil, they come from the old nature. Who is the old man? Satan. Satan. It's coming from Satan. Satan is called the old man. All these ideas of rebellion, they come from Satan. We are going to teach you how to hold that thought. Become like a policeman. You know, when any, any thought is coming, you say, wait, wait, on the door. You say, who are you? Show me your ID. You see that? You're going to tell the idea, show me your ID. The, the idea will say, I'm, I'm not coming from God. I'm coming from the demon. You say, no, 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 no. I, I don't want you. Go. Okay, I'm coming from God. I'm a good idea. I'm coming to help you. Okay, come in. That's what you do, church. You don't need to swallow hook, sinker, and what? Swallow, no. You check the idea. If you are an officer here, you have your table here, you are inside. This is your uh, receptionist, and you are the manager. Somebody is coming. I want to see the manager. Your receptionist, you say, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What's your name? Uh, do you have appointment? Uh, did he ask you to come? You know, you will cross things of mine. It's not when somebody says, I want to see you one day. I say, oh, go. Oh, you say, wait. You ask. Then you call your manager and say, sir, did you ask this person to come? His name is this and that. He will tell you, oh, no, 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 I'm busy. You say, sorry, you can't see him today. Or he says, okay, yes, 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 I have an appointment. You say, okay, go. That is what you have to do here in your temple. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. You are going to hold ideas, thoughts captive because thoughts are dangerous. 
If you allow wrong thoughts to enter, you can't even remove it. You don't know how. So, look at it here, where we read in where Second Corinthians 10, it tells us uh, a little bit uh, on how to manage that. But the first idea that we can arrest thoughts came from that place. And that's a very good idea. Look at it there. It said, casting down imaginations. What is imaginations? Thoughts. That is creative. Creative thoughts. Some imaginations are very, 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 very good. Uh, I will tell you some of them that are very good. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Thank you. So we are going to do what we call, um, we call a, a, a casting chains together. How do we do that? You bring that idea that is coming, you check it to the Bible, you check it in the Word of God, you know what idea it is. Because the Word of God has every positive idea that are coming from God. For example, if an idea is coming to you to say, um, um, you know, tell lies, tell lies, tell them I'm not there. You know, your, 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 your manager is telling you to tell somebody, I am not there, tell them I'm not there. When you look at that, you say, Savage, you're here, you know. You say, tell them I'm not here. What are you going to do? Now, are you going to tell that person, oh, my manager is not there, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, you are a Christian. Your manager will also know that you have lied. Or are you going to tell them, oh, he's here, he's here. I bet he told me not to tell you that he's here, right? <laughs> you can't do that because that is not a, your manager will say, what an idiot is this? So what are you going to do? Are you going to lie or are you going to... You see, that is what I'm talking about. That's that what I'm talking about. There are people who want to use you in such a way that you don't want to be used that way. That you don't want to get out of it, you don't know how to. You see? The devil also does that. The devil will say to you, to you did God say, did God say uh, you should obey everything? Did God say you should not eat this? Did God say you should not enjoy yourself? The devil will suggest that. So if the devil suggests that, you know that he did that to Eve. He did that to Eve. You know, Eve was right in what she was saying. But the devil said, the devil was trying to put doubt. See that? Did God say you shouldn't eat uh, from, the, from the fruit here? Eve said no. He said we should not eat from that one in the same time. The devil said no, no, you shall... We shall, we, shall, we shall not surely die. We shall not surely die. In fact, you will be like God when you eat it. You see how one idea corrupted the human family. When Eve did what the devil was telling her to do, do you know what happened? Eve lost the most beautiful estate in the whole of the universe. There was no place as beautiful as Eden. Eden was a place of pleasure, a place of joy. A place where human beings, garden of love, full of flowers, full of beauty, full of animals. They were not bad animals, they were all friendly. But one day, an enemy brought in a thought an idea inside their temple, inside their mind. And that idea was meditated on and it led to their being expunged. They were sacked from paradise. They lost, they lost their heritage. They regretted yet they couldn't regain it. 
They cried, yet they couldn't do anything about it. How about Esau? Esau had an idea. His own idea, thought, was to belittle what was important. Some people belittle what is important. See? They don't know what is important. They don't know how to, how to honor what God has done. They belittle it. They think it is not important. You know that his brother came with a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, stew and um, a meal. And this young man says, "Can I have have some of that food?" The brother says, "Yes, you can have, but you have to promise me." Um, that I am the senior brother now. That you you sell me your bad right. Uh, what do I have to do with bad right? Is it will it feed me? Will it uh, will it give me eternal life? What is that? But uh, take it if you want. Give me something to eat. Some people belittle everything they have. They don't know the value. A little thought in the mind, but that was the wrong thought, wrong thought. When you check that thought against the Bible, that's why it's very important. He, where we read, he said that these thoughts are thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. That means that when you check the word of God, these thoughts are not in line. They are not in line with the Word of God. Any thought that is not in line with the Word of God is a dangerous thought. It can hurt you. You have to hold it captive. So, look at Esau. Esau told his brother to take the best right. And the, the Bible said, when he had made that mistake, and even though he was crying later, he could not correct what was done. He wished he would correct it. He said, Oh, Father, is there no more blessing? But the father started cursing him. The father said, You will serve your junior brother. Say, My father, my father, please bless me. The father said, No, no, your brother is blessed. He will rule over you. Your brother will do what? Rule over you. He has no idea that what is involved in something he thought was nothing. It involves rulership, dominion. Wow. So you have to be careful how you manage the ideas that come into you. When the enemy is bringing in ideas, so you have to uh, do one of these things. Look at here. Number one, he said we can cast down our imagination. Number one, you can do what? Cast down imagination. So when you start feeling or thinking what is dangerous, you realize it. How do you realize it? From the Word of God. Every bad idea wants to go above the Word of God. So when you realize that that is a bad idea, then you cast it down. Number two, he says those ideas, you can hold them captive. You can, you can say, wait a minute, I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe. Stay here first, let me check you. You take your Bible, you check it out. Because when they are in your mind, they will not hurt you here. They hurt you when you swallow it, when you believe it. Somebody getting that? When you are meditating on it, thinking about it, it will not hurt you. But when you believe it, it will hurt you. So before you believe it, you check it in the Bible. You check it and see whether it is in line. Just like the Perian. 
The Belian brethren, they don't swallow what you are saying. They will check it out. They will check it out from the Bible. They will, they will, they will search the scripture. They will search your, your, their scripture and check it out. If it is in line, then they will accept it. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, that is the right way. Then number three, he said, I'm having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You see, if you obey God, you will prevent yourself from evil thoughts. If you make up your mind that I want to obey God, I want to follow God, when these ideas of rebellion come, you will find it out. But if you are gullible, you will not find it out. So make up your mind that you want to serve God, you want to, you want to follow God. You will see how these ideas, when somebody wants to introduce these things that will make you fall, because it will make you fall into the pit. There's a pitfall. When you get some of these ideas, you believe it fall. It makes you to fall. You will see that some ideas will change your dreams. Your dreams become nightmare. You will know that something wrong, something wrong has entered you. Something wrong has entered your spirit. Because it will change everything. But this is our ideas. This is our words. Somebody spoke. I know when I was in the secondary school, somebody spoke, you know, just a friend told me something. I remember that every, you know, even till today, that thing he told me was a very bad lie. It troubled my life until I know how to, how to counter it. When your life changed, remember that there is somebody, there is somehow you got an information, a wrong information, you know, from, from a source. That's why some experts will try to dress, some experts will try to dress when you got what is disturbing your life. They will try to dress it. Then they will ask you questions. When did this trauma, because bad ideas bring trauma, they will ask you, when did this trauma start? But they will be able to dress it. Sometimes it is rejection, very big rejection. Somebody you trust so much rejected you. It can bring trauma in your life. It can be a word that was thrown to you. And that word shock you. See? So, if you are able to trace distance, is one way you can deal with it. One way is to trace it. But it's not everybody that can trace it. I remember that somebody had been successful in tracing, in tracing it like in Second Kings 6. You know that Elisha traced, the sons of the prophet said to him, you know, that the place where they are living is too small now. Can they go and fetch some wood and expand their house, their territory, and build a, a new house. Elisha says it's a good idea. Yeah, you can even see that, we can even read it, which is beautiful. From 1 to 7, you, the answers are there. Let, let's see, from 1, what to go. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place here where we may dwell. And he answered, Go yet. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, 
master, for it was borrowed. Amen. Look at it there. Look at it there. So they were asking the man of God, their father in the Lord. This is their father in the, in the Lord. They said, we have increased. We are sons of the prophet. But we have increased now. This place is too narrow. It's too small for us. Can you permit us to go and build in a new place? The man of God said, yes. It's a good idea. Expansion. Good idea. While we are doing that work, one that borrowed the axe, who was fetching and, and felling the tree, the axe head fell into the river. And he said it was borrowed. It's not mine. It was borrowed. Now, now look at that. Uh, the axe is um, the axe is is like a person actually. The axe head is like the mind, the mind of the person. While he was doing the work, the axe head fell into the river. So he was holding the wood, the body, but the mind has fallen. Can you just picture that? That's what happened. Something made the mind, which is, which is the axe head. Some people can do their work physically, but some people can use their mind to do their work. So the axe head has fallen into the waters. Now, one of the things the man of God did was when he was asking them, when they, when they complained to him, the axe head had fallen into the water. He asked them these questions. Let's go there and find what he asked them. Six. And the man of God said, We have fell it. And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in theta. And the iron did swim. Wow. That is interesting. What does, what does that mean? The man of God said, Where did the iron head fall? They showed him. This is showing you one of the ways to solve a problem. Somebody getting it? It's showing you one of the ways to solve the problem. Is to know where, when. You are saying that you lost your mind. And since that time that you have never been yourself, that um, um, you have tried, you have met many uh, pastors, you have gone to the hospital, but you have not been very healthy since. They ask you, when did that happen? Then you said, when I lost my mother, or when I lost my, my closest friend. You are giving the, the counselor an idea of the type of trauma that reduced your life, that brought this new thing to you. Because it came through your mind, the axe head. Now, when you are able to tell the story very well, especially the psychologists, they use this method. The Christian counselors, we don't normally use this method. The Christian counselors, we don't normally dress like when you were young, when you were small, when you were like seven years or eight years, somebody harassed you or so. You know, the Christian counselors, we don't normally. It is not wrong to go that way. But, because we have a better way. Paul said we have a better way. Amen. Paul said love is the better way. Mm. You see that? So, now, now, but look at the way the man of God used to solve this problem. Because he solved it. He solved it. He asked them, where? Where did the axe head fell in? They took him and showed him the place. So if somebody is coming to you complaining that his life is bad now and that he doesn't know what to do, you can ask such a question. When did it start? You see that? You can ask that question. So when he said, if it is something relating to grief, death of a very beloved person, like a mother, like an uncle, like a father, you know that that is the trauma that came as a result of grief. Excess sorrow. Some people do excess sorrow. You know, when somebody dies, they don't 
They don't get consoled easily. They go into sorrowing for a long time. That affects them. So, the man of God, Elisha, said, where did he fall? Then they showed him here. What did he do? He went and got a stick, cut it. That stick was a type of the cross of Jesus Christ. You remember that? Jesus is at the center of everything. Before Jesus went to the cross, the Old Testament, we are seeing Jesus through the animal sacrifices. When they killed the bull, that was Jesus. When they killed the lamb, that was Jesus. That was before he died. But after he died, they don't do that anymore because now, after he died, we who are believers, we also use Jesus, the Lamb of God. But we don't kill the bull. We don't kill the lamb. And Jesus said, as often as you remember me, remember me, remember me. That is in the temple, in your mind, you remember him dying on the cross. If you do this very well, you are going to be successful because, because the devil is at the center of troubling us. And the only thing that takes him out there is the death of Jesus. If you bring the death of Jesus properly in the situation, the devil will hands off. So what the man of God did, Elisha, show me where the axe head fell. Your mind is in trouble. When did it start? Show me. They say it is here. He took the stick of the cross. This the cross has not come, but I I represent this. The Son of God will be the propitiation, the atonement for sin. Whatever sin that has brought to this loss the Son of God will pay when he will die on the cross. He drop it into that place. Payment. Payment for the sin that will cause trouble. Payment has been made. He drop it. And the iron head started swimming to the top. And he told them, extend your hands and, 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 and fetch it. And extended their hands and fixed their iron head. This is a miracle that happened in this world. If the memory of the coming death of Jesus can cause such a miracle, how about the memory of the actual death of Jesus? How about the memory of the actual death of Jesus? But remember the word I use, memory. Memory is called stronghold. See? When you have the stronghold of the death of Jesus, it will help you to remove the stronghold of the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, if I have the stronghold of the devil, what do I do? I put the picture of Jesus crucified in my mind. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. So that is very, very important. This is what we call casting out imagination. You cast out the old imagination that is destroying your life by putting in the imagination of Christ. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus. So, we have given you the key. That's the key. That's the key. Now, if you have that, you are going to win in many battles. The battle of the mind. You, you will win. What helps you to win the battle of the mind is Christ in you. When you meditate on that, meditate on the world, and get the right picture. If you get the right picture in your mind, he brings in the solution. The right picture is in First Corinthians 11, 24-25. That's, that's the right picture. 
remember, remember, me Jesus say remember. As often as you remember, that is in 26. He says, as often as you do this, remember. So to remember means to bring in an image into your mind. To remember means what? To bring in an image into your mind. So Christ said, remember. So, finally, before we pray, we have seen the example of Elisha solving the problem um, through the cross. We have also seen, yes, how we can displace an idea, you know, the old idea, you can displace it with the new idea. You can see that in Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Maybe we go there quickly. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, tells us to put off and put on. Are we there? All right, that's there. Let, let's, let's read. We want to go. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness lost and be renewed in the spirit of your mind to put on the new man and that put on the new man right which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness Wow, that is powerful. That's powerful. When somebody tells you something and you believe it, if it is not in line with the Bible, it produces the old man. The old man, which is uh, there, it disturbs your mind. The work of the old man is division, is strife, anger, rot, evil. You know, that's what the old man does. But he said you can put it off. Thank you, Jesus. He said you can put on the new man. So when you put on the new mind of Christ, that you are put on the new man. And when you put, put that, it will displace the old one. That's where healing of your mind can come. Yes, you can renew your mind. So that's what we do. Now, the other day, I did something when I was praying. I did something when I was praying. All of a sudden, I remember that thing that man told me when I was in secondary school. I was still in class one or two. I met him. We were just, he said something, and I believed that thing. That thing was wrong. And it troubled my life for a long time until one day I said, This is wrong. So that very day I was praying, the Lord just reminded me very well how to do it and exactly Ephesians 4 22-24 helped me I was able to replace the lies with the truth of the word of God and I was instantly pyam. it's like you on the switch here pyam, 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 pyam. All, the, all the lies we are on wow thank you Lord so we are going to pray for you here. If you have been laboring to get away from something, the hour has come, you are going to be free. And you will also know how to set other people free. Thank you, Father. For example, there have been in your life some areas you didn't want to go, but somebody uh, convinced you to go that way. And up to now, it's been troubling you, but you don't know um, how to come out of it. But today, we are giving you hope that you can come out. There are lifestyles that is that can ruin your life if you don't come out. So today, you have a chance to stay nowhere. And there are also uh, things that can also work out for your good, actually. That's, that's the fourth one. There are things that can work out for your good if you don't know how to manage it, but if you just hand it over to Christ. 
If you hand it over to Christ, it will turn. Christ will turn it for good. Joseph did that. Joseph did that. In, in Genesis 50, verse 20, uh, maybe if, if we can go there, Genesis 50, verse 20, Joseph did that. Joseph did that, and the result was excellent. The result was excellent. Can we read it? Want to go? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save many people alive. You see what Joseph told his brothers? His brothers did something evil against him. But Joseph, you know, undo, he undid it. Not by going to psychologists. He didn't go to psychologists. He didn't even go to any pastor. But he handed it over to God. And something turned. You can, you can do that for yourself. You can deliver yourself in most of these things. You see that? You can deliver yourself by certain prayers. It's not everything you are looking for somebody else. You can read the Bible and explain it and get it and do it. Look at what Joseph did. Joseph did it. You see that? He did it. He forgave them, number one. Forgive that person. Don't, don't revenge. Forgive that person and talk to God as if you are talking to a friend. Tell God what the problem is. And he will help you. Can we rise up? Can we rise up? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I Let's pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. I thank you. Say, I put on Christ. Say, I put on Christ. In the name of Jesus. Every imagination. Every thought. That is in me. That is not in line with the word of God. Say, I stop it from operating in me. Say, my temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Is the house of God. Any image, any picture that is in my mind. That is not in line with God. Say, I cast it out. I cast it out. Say, in the name of Jesus, I replace it with the image of God, with the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have a new image. A new, a new bread from the most high. The, most high. the old has gone, and the, and the new has come. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. my thoughts are new. Thoughts are new. They, are they are biblical. They are spiritual. They are, spiritual. They are, holy. They are holy. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. any unholy thought, I hold it captive. I arrest it and I cast it out. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Say Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover every person present and those who are watching and connecting. Yes, on the media. Lord, I commit them unto your hands. Yes. And I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, 
Sanctify their mind. Amen. Yes, let the mind of Christ rule in our mind. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.